guys, Neri here from Drake Week Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back as another Let's Play episode of Dawn Tide. I absolutely love this game. The music, the atmosphere, the characters, the everything is just great. I love the art style. It makes me it makes me giddy every time I boot this up to play it for you guys. But anyway, everyone, just sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes and let me entertain you. And let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you're up. Let's go. Let's have some fun. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Alright, I turned to follow his gaze. The car is small and boxy, painted a grayish beige. A yellow taxi sign rattles on its hood as it trundles steadily towards us. Move over! Our group parts to either side of the road, flattening ourselves up against the wall on what little space passes for a pavement. And it's then I realize I've been left on my own. Joe, Ranzo, and Sal stand shoulder to shoulder with their backs against the wall, opposite wall. I consider moving over to them, but the little taxi pulls itself up to the bumpy road between us. Light bounces back from the windows as it struggles forwards. It forces me to squint. Between blinks, I see a figure in the back seat. The head rests on a hand, lent up with an elbow on the door. The black fingers score across a pale arrowhead of a face. Though they're smothered by sunlight, I feel the flash of two yellow eyes wrap around me. My heart holds me in place, and the window and the car move past. The roar continues rising until it disappears over the hill's crest. Once we've checked there's no other cars coming up behind it, we regroup on the road to carry on. Maybe I'm still cloudy from the pub atmosphere, but I feel like my movements are a second or two behind my thoughts. I'm starting to wish we took a cab up now. I'm knackered. Don't, don't you pull ropes and stuff for a living? Yeah, but that's all upper body. It's always been too hilly for me here. Consider toned calves your welcome home gift, then. Keep hauling. <laughs> At the wheelhouse, soft music drifts through speakers. The gang sits around the table, sipping on what remains of our drinks after the meal. <clears throat> so, you all free now, Sal? Almost. I've got some changes to make for the festival before everything goes to print. I didn't know you were working on that. Yeah, they usually hire grads for it. It's been a bit of, bit of a pain, but it's a good portfolio piece. Joe sits absentmindedly before his plate. It still holds half a fillet of salmon and some new potatoes, which bathed in the remnants of a pale orange puree. You playing it in this year? You playing it this year, Joe? <clears throat> no. Oh, uh, no! It's more of a folk festival. Don't think my stuff would fit. Just put your keyboard on banjo mode. Oh no, wait, that's it. That's you, isn't it, Ranzo? Banjo man. Mandolin. But yeah, it'd be nice to play again. <laughs> Maybe they still got some slots. I'm still getting redesign requests for the from the for the flyers. I'm not updating the set list. What is it this time? They want the body text in another new font. You're joking. They want it in a slab serif, which messes up all the tracking. That sounds bad, whatever it means. A waiter set steps up to the table, a notepad and a few small menus in hand. Are we all good for drinks? Any desserts? There's some silent deliber deliberation around the table before Ranzo speaks. And eh, no, I'm good. Thank you. His sentiments are echoed by the group. The waiter nods politely and reaches down for our empty plates. Actually, could we grab the bill? Thanks. Sure. The waiter begins stacking the plates on one arm until he gets to Joe. Are you finished? Yeah, thanks, thanks. It was great, but I'm full. No problem. I'll grab the bill for you now. The waiter heads back towards the kitchen. Billy sips at his glass and eyes Joe. That's a lie. You're never full. I'm trying to be polite. Ranzo rubs his eyes and stretches his jaw, stifling a yawn. Tired, Ranz? His thick palms tuck under his muzzle. His fingers massage through the rough bristles of his neck. Yeah, last night was rough. Had to be on had to be on hand till three. Up again at eight. God, that is rough. Billy affects the accent of an old fisherman. Scrubbing the decks, were ya, boyo? Well, hopefully that'll be the last of that sort of thing for a while. Renzo's eyes travel between the rest of us. His hands unfurl and he gives them a little shake as his ears perk up. I got the promotion! The table stutters to a start, voices overlapping in surprise. Chair legs squeaks as arms we sh as, I as arms we shift in our seats. Oh, oh god, what is this horrible, horrifying thing? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> what promotion? Ranzo looks gleeful and confused all at once. The, uh, AS promotion? I texted you about it last week when we set off. The phone screen lights up around the table. I don't have a message. Nothing here. Nope. 
Uh, nope. I got nothing. That's, uh, really weird. Look. Manzo turns his phone to us. At the top of the message window, there's a picture of my younger self. I'm dressed in all black. Stood in front of an old castle wall. It's an old, it's an old band photo shoot. Awful. I'm sending this out to everyone. I'm sending this out to everyone, so spoil for the spam, but there's a chance I might get a promotion. There's an able seaman position going, and I've been put forward. I'll know when I get back. Looking forward to seeing you guys. It's followed by a string of shorter messages. Sorry. Promotion. Going. Looking. I hope there wasn't a spelling exam as part of it. Billy eyes the message with a grin and gives Ranzo a firm pat on the back. Get on you, man. Oh, I'm so glad for you, dude. She leans over to her side and gives Ranzo a squeeze. Yeah, congratulations. Great news, dude. You want to hit the town tonight and celebrate? Ranzo's smile lapses into a yawn. I don't know. I think I need an early one. Come on, man. This is big. He's right. I'm down for a sesh if it's for this. Well... Guys, he said he's tired. He's got, what, five hours sleep last night? Ranzo cricks his neck and blinks two bleary eyes. Four. And I'm seeing Mum tomorrow morning. Let's go out tomorrow. It's been a big day already. We could even go to that place Joe mentioned. Thanks for permission, Sal. What? Joe's face is flat as he starts to shuffle out of his seat and dig into his pocket. Nothing. Was just suggesting something in the moment, you know? Something that's not booked in. Oh, come on, Joe. He's tired. Really, it's fine. I... Joe keeps his eyes off Sal as he pulls out a rolled cigarette with his lighter. His glare softens as his eyes fall on Ranzo. We can do it tomorrow. Eh, it's... We can do it tomorrow. It's not a problem. Joe. It's fine. I just need a... F <laughs> he perches the thin stick in his beak and heads towards the door. He's holding his composure, but his exit is anything but graceful. Sal's head slumps in her hands. For fuck's sake. Nice one. <laughs> oh, don't, Billy. Billy takes a sip of his glass, leaving bubbles fizzing on his upper lip. He's just, uh, he's just had a few too many. You're not wrong there. I think he's just excited, but I don't think I've got it in me for a night out now. I eye the empty seat Joe left. Stay at the table. Joe, Joe, you're gonna get your own path, don't worry. Sal stands from her seat and takes a gulp of her wine. She unclips a brown, beaten-up wallet from the cord tethered to her belt loop, dropping it on the table. I need the loo. I've got cash on me, so if the waiter comes back, I'll pay for Ranzo. Aw, uh, you don't have to do that, Sal. You're not promoted yet, Captain. Just give me a drink tomorrow. You're a legend. How are we splitting it? Everyone all right to do five ways with a tip? Sure. Sal does a little mental arith arithmetic. That should be... 39... I'd say 39, I'd just say $39. $39 each. Maybe Shinbone was a better choice after all. Oh, wait, Billy, you only had water. Nah, I'm good with that. You sure? Billy tugs at his hoodie. Grant, plus loans, plus the championship money. You haven't even done the championship yet. Bit presumptuous? Come out riding with me tomorrow and tell me if you think someone can outpace me. Dare you. <laughs> no thanks. Sal turns towards the back of the room before she's interrupted. Wait, Sal, before you go. Ranzo gets up too, shifting sideways to get out from behind the table on the same side as Sal. I'm gonna head off soon. Come here. Okay, but I really need to pee. I won't squeeze you too hard, then. Ranzo wraps his fuzzy arms around Sal's shoulders and gives them a few pats before pulling back. See you tomorrow. See you then. See you then, Ranz, and congrats again on the job. Renzo smiles as Sal disappears through a worn door opposite the kitchen. Right on. See you directly, Billy. Have a good ride. You too, bro. Say hi to your mum for me. Will do. As Renzo turns towards the door, he catches my eye. Get you tomorrow, Riley. Seeing him step away, it's just like when he's when I when we saw him off at the docks all those years ago. Stay with Billy, talk to Ranzo. Stay with Billy, talk to Ranzo. Stay with Billy. Ranzo makes his way wearily out into the street. As the door closes behind him, he turns to his left and speaks out some muffled words to whom I assume must be Joe. Billy and I are about the Bill and I are, blah. Billy and I are the only ones at the table. The restaurant is empty, aside from what looks like a couple over in the far corner. Billy's eyelid twitches and a grimace passes over him before he shakes it off. You okay? What? Your face. You did sort of a. Uh... I mimic the expression back to him. 
Oh, that. I've been sitting down all day. It makes me restless. Like you've got to get the energy out? Yeah, exactly. I lean back on my chair, resting a shin on my knee and stretching my arms out to the sides. I get that. I haven't been sleeping properly, so I've been trying to do the same. What do you do for it? I go for walks, usually. When I can, anyway. It's hard to fit the time in. A walk long enough to wear you out needs to be like three hours minimum with a good pace. Probably to Pohau and back from here. I definitely don't go that far. You need something more intensive, then. You tried running? I've got the kit, but... I move the wide sole of my boot in a circular motion. I've got those flat Martin feet. Hmm, not the best. At least you got two of them. Heh, <laughs> true. My eyes trace the lines of muscles down from his thigh to the elbow knee. His fur disappears beneath a series of tight straps. The line continues through the hard material until it tapers into a rubbery crescent tripping. Where's the low? Oh, what the fuck tripping came from? Crescent Spring. Checking out the goods? I'm just impressed, I suppose. Thinking about how much time you must have spent with surgeries and... I look back up at him, a bit embarrassed. I may have overstepped. Sorry, you probably don't really want to talk about that, do you? Not really, it's not important. The bearings around his knee tight, quietly groan as his thigh muscles tense and define themselves. His eyelid twitches again as a sly look crosses his face. You still got a bike? It's pretty shitty, but yeah. Why don't you come out with me tomorrow? <laughs> no, it's too heavy. I'll ride it, you can take mine. I think back to the sleek, elegant racing bike perched by the booth in the old chariot. You're not being serious. I am. I need to swap the pedals over. I get the heavy one, and you get the light one, so it balances out. Where do you plan on going? Billy excels slowly and tips his head back in thought. I was going to take the north coast down to Poldor, but I could shorten it to the quick 20... to a quick 20 miler. 20 miles? That's quick! And it's, it's not as far as it sounds, and there's a good turning point with a few, few to, with a view to top that, to stop that. Stop at. Damn it, I'm tired. Sorry, guys. I've only really taken my bike to the shops and back. If it's really too much, we can circle around early and make it ten. But you said it yourself. You need wearing out. I suppose. Trust me, the only way to get past this is to push. You're, is to push yourself through. He bangs the side of his fist on the table with each word. The contents of the glasses form small waves in response. So what do you say? It's sunny tomorrow, but chilly with a low headwind. It's perfect cycling weather. Nah. Sorry, dude. Maybe another time. It's my first day off in a while and I need to chill. Suit yourself, but you won't sort out your sleep issues by chilling all day. Yeah, maybe not. I I'll work it out. I wish I could chill tomorrow. Sal returns, lifting her glass from the table and sitting down herself. Oh yeah, the flyers, right? She takes a sharp sip of her wine. The never-ending saga. Out of the corner of her eye, Sal spies the waiter crossing the floor. Her expression lifts into something more friendly as she raises a hand to him and nods. That sucks. Charge them extra. Oh, I will. The waiter arrives back at the table with a card reader in hand. Sorry for the wait. How would you like to pay? All on one card? We're splitting it. It should be $39 each. Our friend had to go, so I'll get his. The waiter taps at the device and hands it to Sal. Oh, sorry, here you go. She thumbs through the contents of her wallet until she has a good stack of notes. She hands them to the waiter along with some coins. The waiter flicks through them. That's great, thank you. As the waiter pivots to Billy, Joe returns to the table. He still looks somewhat jaded, but he's calmer. The calm music which filled the room has faded out, leaving it empty aside from the occasional clatter of cutlery. It's closing time. What's the scores on the doors, then? $39. $39 each. There's an inward hissing sound from Joe's beak as he reaches for his wallet. Sitting down to his pint, he slips a credit card on the onto the table. Once the waiter has finished his rounds, he thanks us again before he is ushered over to the only other full table in the establishment. Our drinks are either finished swiftly or left as they are as we get ready to head out. Ooh, that's pretty. And I'm going to be getting some... Pretty amazing view soon. Guys, there's a bit of an announcement coming up in, our, in another video. When I'm ready to tell you guys what's going on, the next step in my life, you, got, you guys are going to know. I'm going to make a video dedicated to it. Anyway, at only 10 p.m., the town and the road are quiet. Tuesday night, I suppose. We shuffle to a crossroads spot in the light of a street lamp. Billy sends a pebble clattering across the thin street to our right. Right, my place is up that way. Have a good ride tomorrow. 
See you tomorrow, dude. Don't fuck up your other leg. Billy springs the sharp edge of his prosthesis round to playfully smack against Joe's shin. I'll fuck yours up first. Have some. After some laughter and jostling from both of them, turns a turns up the hill to depart with a wave. See you, lads. You guys heading back to your place? It's not an Australian accent. What the fuck? I need to do a proper... Try, I'm trying to try and do a proper Australian accent. I'm trying... I'm gonna try and imitate, uh, skill up. <laughs> yep. Sorry, it's a bit of an early one. It's fine, man, to be honest. <clears throat> what? Yeah. I'm trying to do an Australian accent, it's coming out different. It's fine, man, to be honest, I'm tired. I think that's the prevailing mood tonight. Yeah, I guess so. Joe uses a moment of pause to light a cigarette. So, the gang's all back together, eh? Yep, it's been too long. You're telling me. Stray embers wander on the wind and die out. Joe's plumage shudders up with his shoulders. His feet edge to the narrow lane to our left. Well, good to see you both. See you tomorrow. Don't be a stranger. See you then. With a wave of his free hand, Joe exits the light of the street lamp into a brush, into a bushy pathway between two houses. Oh yeah, and Riley. You still owe me for that pint. Sal lets out a soft sigh, then turns onwards down the hill. You okay? I'm alright. Is it about Joe earlier? Not really. I mean, sort of. He's just doing what he does. He might be rough, right? He, he, might, he might be right, though, about the pub thing. Hmm? When you and him were talking about going to the pub more often. And tonight's been nice, mostly. Could probably do it more often. Yeah, you work a lot. You should take a break more often. I just don't want to overdo it. You're overdoing it with work, if anything. I know, but with Joe, he can be a little full-on. I just don't want to make a habit of it. You remember what he was like at your birthday? I think back. Yeah, that was a lot. Things are okay between you two, though, right? Yeah, we're fine. I'll talk to him tomorrow. He got a bit snappy, but I guess I did too. I think we're all a little tense about today. Sal and I continue to walk. Our footsteps bounce between the stone wall, the stone walls to fill in the lull, to fill the lull in conversation. Ooh, excuse me. We pass under a tree overhanging from the garden of a holiday home. Above us, its branches peel back to a quilt of white speckles. Good sky tonight. You want to get your telescope out when we get back? I should get an early one, really. Forecast is good this week, so it should be like this for a while. Thanks for setting up all this, Sal. It's nothing. I like working stuff out. As we round the bend, we find ourselves in one of the town's warm pockets, shielded from the ocean air. A streetlight cuts open the shadow of the valley. The murky black is pushed aside to ensure that we're still treading the familiar paths home. In the middle of its aura, there's a flicker of white. This time, it isn't a sunbeam across a window. It isn't a reflection in the crowd. The sun has gone in and the street is empty. The lights from the town and sky, which before shone bright, now feel faded, drowned in the incandescence of two golden eyes. They're wide, surprised. Sunflowers in a snowy field. His parted lips drift over soft, pointed teeth to form a smile. His brows fall from the sh from the shock and come to rest above his eyes. I'm gonna save this right here. This sounds really interesting. All right, so I'm gonna save this part for the next one because it sounds like we're about to get introduced to a new character. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.